All right, guys. Um, today we'll be filling out our portfolio, page 56. <clears throat> so make sure you have your portfolio in front of you along with a uh, pen or pencil. And um, here we go. So page 56, building concepts. Uh, we're going to do this develop understanding section. It says complete the organizer to build your knowledge of the concept. So the concept word is culture. Now, you've probably heard that word before. All right, so it's a noun. It's a thing. All right, and here's an example sentence. It says, listening to music that expresses our feelings about ourselves and our world is an important part of teen culture. So uh, I want you to underline this listening to music section. And then I want you to write above it in the little tiny space here or even in the margin to the left. Write something else that also expresses our feelings and ourselves about our world and being an important part of teen culture or an important part of being a teen. So once you have that written and make sure to pause the video, write it and resume the video, um, let's go ahead and go into the synonyms. Remember synonyms mean uh, words that are the same as the word culture. So uh, here's an everyday word that means the same thing as culture. Habits, something you do every day. I'm in the habit of listening to music. Uh, it's part of your culture. It's also a habit. Here's another every, everyday way of saying it. It's a way of life. It's just what I do. You know? um, and then here are some more precise words to say, a more academic. Customs. Certain cultures have certain customs. Bowing, shaking hands, those are all customs. Or also, lifestyle. It's just the lifestyle of the culture. It's just kind of what we do. Now, take a look at the word family here. Um, you can say culture, which is the noun. You can say cultural, which is an adjective. And you can say culturally, which is an adverb. So a noun, I want you to write right here, thing. Next to adjective, I want you to write uh, a description. And then next to adverb, I want you to write how it's done. Because remember, an adverb is something that is telling you how the verb is. So, um, you know, he decorated culturally, or he's saying culturally. So this is how it's done. So once you have those three things written down and all the synonyms down, let's move on to the meaning of the word culture. So the meaning of the word culture is the art, beliefs, and values of a group of people, all right? So teens are a group of people. You guys may have a, a set of beliefs or art or values. And when it says art, it could also be music. You guys got your music that you like as part of your culture. But if you go to a different country, let's say in Israel, or even let's say in Africa, they're gonna have different art beliefs and values because they are a different group of people. So that's what it means to be a part of a culture. Coming over here to essential characteristics, <clears throat> it says ways of living that are shared by people or how people live out their ideas in a particular place or society. All right, so cultures usually are attached to places. Here at Pinacate, we have a certain culture going on. Maybe in your neighborhood or in Paris, there's a culture that you follow. And then maybe when you go visit family, uh, maybe down in Mexico or someplace else, there might be uh, some different cultures because it's a different place. So let's go ahead and let's come up with some examples here. So the first example it gives is foods commonly eaten in certain places. That's an example. You might eat food uh, in Mexico that would be different than you eat food here. That would be different than you eat food in Canada. Next Here's an idea of another example. <clears throat> popular music, books, and movies. Uh, popular music and books, they're different in America than they are in uh, Europe and than they are in China. All right? Also, national holidays. All right? We just celebrated Thanksgiving. No other country celebrates Thanksgiving aside from Canada, and Canada's Thanksgiving is in September. So uh, that national holiday is tied to the United States of America. It's part of our culture. 
I want you to come up with another way or another example of uh, something that belongs to a culture. So once you have an example here, and I'm not going to give you one, so you need to have this filled out in order to get full credit for this. Let's go over to the non-examples. Right. This says uh, a habit of yours that no one else shares. You like to chew on your pencil. That's not part of culture. That's just part of you being a little weird. All right? And we're all a little bit weird. All right? uh, here's another non-example. Having a unique sense of style. You have blue streaks in your hair. You uh, like to wear clothes that are baggy or clothes that are, are uh, dirty. Whatever you kind of like to do, that's your unique style. That's not really part of a culture because it's not part of a, what a group of people are doing. Um, another example would be living in isolation by yourself. If you're by yourself, isolation means by yourself. Uh, you're not part of a culture. You're part of you, just doing your own thing. All right? Another non-example would be not participating in traditions. All right? So if everybody else is celebrating Thanksgiving and you go, nah, don't want to do it, that's not being a part of the culture. So now let's write about it. So this says some, and I'm going to give you the noun to put in here. So uh, this says some, and the word here is graffiti. Uh, the program isn't letting me display it for some reason. So the word is graffiti. So it says some graffiti is evidence of gang culture, but that is not always true. So sometimes when you see graffiti, that means, oh, it's part of gang culture. That's what gangs do. But it says that's not always true. In fact, much graffiti adds color and beauty to a neighborhood. And I'll say it again. Color and beauty to a neighborhood. And shows a community's cultural diversity. And it's, for some reason, letting me display the word diversity. So um, this is how you spell diversity. So it should read, some graffiti is evidence of gang culture, but that's not always true. In fact, much graffiti adds color and beauty to a neighborhood and shows a community's cultural diversity. So sometimes when you go into parts of LA, all the paint and art on the wall doesn't mean there's gangs around, but it means that there's a group of Hispanic people here or a group of uh, Vietnamese people over here. And there's art on the wall or graffiti that has to do with how diverse or different um, an area is. So we're going to skip the build knowledge section for today. We'll get to this later because it's a group discussion. So let's go ahead and go over to the next page. So on page 57, there's another group of four words that uh, we're going to know. All, right, all these words are important to having a conversation about graffiti or street art. And you'll need to know all, uh, all of these words uh, for the final uh, project that you guys will be doing. So let's start with this first word. It's uh, criticism. Uh, I'll say it again, criticism. It's a little hard to say. I'll go ahead and bubble in one, two, three, or four, depending if you don't know the word, if you recognize it, if you're familiar with it, or yeah, you know that really well and could explain it to somebody else. Now let's go to the meanings. It says, remarks that say what you think is bad or incorrect about something. I may uh, give a student some criticism about their writing. Oh, you're missing some periods or capitalization. That, that's some criticism. And the examples here, it says, the teacher's constructive criticism helped Sonia to correct errors she had been making in her writing. I do that often. All right? So criticism isn't always negative, but it is something that, oh, let's point out something that's incorrect. Uh, this other example down here says, students would like to offer criticism about the school assemblies or about the class project without getting into trouble. All right, so maybe you went to the assembly and you didn't like it and you want to be able to say what's wrong or incorrect with it, uh, but you want to be able to do it without getting in trouble. That would be giving criticism about the assembly. Let's move on to the next word. 
deface. So it's a verb. Remember, that's an action word. This is something you do. So you can deface something. Bubble in one, two, three, or four, depending on how well you already know the word. So the meaning is to destroy or damage the way something looks. Now notice this is similar to the word vandal. A vandal is a person who defaces property or something. So these two words would go together well. Right? So an example here, some students deface library books by writing in them. All right, when you check them out, you start doodling in them, they're not yours, and you're defacing them, or you're uh, damaging the way it looks. You might not be ripping pages out, but by writing on it, that's kind of damaging how the book's supposed to look, and it's considered defacing. This next example says, the teens were caught before they could deface the statues in the park. Or another good ending would be, deface the front of the school. Go ahead and pick one of those to write down. All right, moving on to political. This is a good year for political. Go ahead and bubble in one, two, three, or four, depending on uh, how familiar you are with that word. And it's an adjective, which means it describes something. And it's having to do with governments and how they are run. All right, the political election was the election having to do with government. So the example is an effective political leader is someone who can persuade others to agree with him or her. The second example is, I'm not a very political person, but even I care about who is elected mayor. Or you could say, protecting our environment. These are all political issues. And remember, issue was from the last unit we did. An issue is a topic um, of importance. So when it's a political issue, it's a topic of importance that has to do with the government. Now, moving down to the final word here, target. Noun, so it's a thing. One, two, three, or four, depending on how well you've heard this word. Now, let's go ahead and go over the meaning. It's someone or something, sorry, someone or some place that becomes the focus of an action or an activity, especially in a negative way. All right, so uh, I could say the, the vandals were targeting the school or were targeting the old building. All right, the, the old building is a target for the vandals. Um, that's more of a, in, in a negative way. If I was going to say um, Susie was the target of the good deeds that the other students were doing, uh, that doesn't really fit. Target really means negative. If Susie is a target to other students, then they're probably doing something bad to Susie. So let's look at this example. It says, after several students were caught cheating, our school became the target of negative attention in the media, meaning that the news people are all on us and uh, they're all coming to us because we're the target uh, to talk about how all of our students were cheating. All right, so that would be becoming a target of the media in a bad way. And then in this second and last example, it says, the zoo's poor treatment of its animals has made it a target of animal rights groups, or you could say of protesters. All right, protesters or animal rights groups are gonna target the zoo because they're treating their animals pretty poorly. So once you have all, both of these pages complete, uh, make sure you um, show this to me tomorrow. So tomorrow when I'm back, you're going to be uh, showing this to me uh, to be getting credit for this. That'll be going into your grades. So if you're done with this video and there's still time left, uh, you need to move on to the next assignment. So the next assignment is posted on Google Classroom.